Well, boys and girls, welcome to another episode, edition of Room Shots with Sean, brought to you by Barstools and Band Talk. And I'm going to qualify this by saying some of you may not want to listen to this particular podcast. It's not going to be music based. Um, I'm going to put it in the bar, or sorry, the bullpen category. As you know, we had the bullpen, which would cover issues, and um, City Council, God love them, voted to have a landlord registry. And uh, my, I, I just wanted to, uh, you know, say a couple of things on that. I got out of that game about a year and a half ago. And uh, anybody that's what I would call a small-time landlord, which I was, I had less than five properties. Um, it's a pretty hard go. Uh, you're you're not relying on cash flow for the most part. You're relying on people to pay their rent, and. So just to put it in perspective, they put a the province put a rent freeze on, um, and the banks did too. The province extended it. Now here's the thing: the province puts the rent freeze on, but the city doesn't freeze property taxes, and the insurance company doesn't fee, uh, freeze insurance adjustments, and you know different things. The, the gas company and the oil company don't freeze those things. The uh, Nova Scotia Power doesn't freeze those things. So essentially, what happens is. You have a set amount of money that you can rent your property for, and everything else is going up. So it's like anything. It's like, you know, take out the fact you're a landlord and put in the fact you're trying to run your own life. And you get bills, and your job is not paying for those bills. That's essentially what happens to a small-time landlord. And what ends up happening is they go into their pocket for things. So just to put in perspective for anybody that kind of wants to, you know, uh, argue with me or fire or barb, which is totally fine. At one point in time, with one tenant, I was $15,000 in the hall. And I don't know how many people have an extra fifteen grand kicking around, but I certainly didn't. And basically what happened was a little something like this. Tenant got behind on the rent a couple months. I was following up. Instead of them contacting me, they decided to contact the local MLA who, for the sake of this, I won't name, but he happened to be my MLA, so if anybody knew where I was living at the time, you could figure that out pretty pretty quickly. Um, Through the course of dealing with them, they proceeded to get the tenant on welfare, but they weren't paying me. The Department of Community Services was basically paying uh, the tenant, and the tenant could do whatever they want. Now, the, uh, the other part or the other neat thing about this is that while this is all going on and they're not paying, the tenant decides they're going to run out of everything, and they document their life on social media going out to Vancouver. So as they leave, who's left holding the bag? Well, myself to the tune of fifteen grand, and uh, you know a, a place that I got to get ready to try to rent again. Um, you go to the province. The province is like whatever. It's your fault. Cost of doing business. You go to the city about something, and the city all they want to do is harass you. And now we have. Now we have a landlord registry. So you'll, you're going to have to forgive me uh, if I'm not in agreement of this. Now, look, I understand the whole, you know, they call it the slumlord thing and the run eviction. I get that, and that's absolutely unacceptable. However, the city doesn't allow for shades of gray. It's all black and white. So what ends up happening is you've got a staff who, you know, wants to basically figure out basically more ways to squeeze uh, squeeze blood out of a dime. And the dime is you and I, and, you know, it's through tax dollars. So they're trying to figure out more ways to, to, to get more money. And the politicians are, you know, trying to be reactionary. They want to stay in office so somebody's, you know, crying foul. They, uh, you know, they act on it. And they, they, you know, they take cities in. But I think in some weird sort of way, the other part of this is that they think that by having this landlord registry, you know, on short term and then whatever, I think they think it's going to solve the housing problem. But what it's going to do is it's going to do what's happened with me. People are just going to get out of it because they're sick and tired of having government insert their noses. Let me correct that. They don't insert their noses when you need them to, i.e. somebody like me, but they insert their noses when, you know, the person that is, appears to be, uh, you know, the, has the short end of the stick. They're, they're all too happy to get involved. And, you know, 
I uh, I got to call city council out on this one. It's uh, it's getting to the point for me where you know, hey, we got paper straws, right? But we have landfills filled with plastic COVID tests. Um, you know, we got a landlord registry, but you can't find a, a single place to park downtown. You got people that I know that would love to come here and do business in the city, but they just they find it way too labor intensive. They find it way too much red tape. Um, and at the end of the day, they can go to Moncton and not have to drive the extra two and a half, three hours here, um, you know, to deal with the nonsense that we have here. City Hall has to wake up. They have to wake up, pure and simple. Um, and, you know, I miss the days. Some people, you know, might go and roll their eyes, but I miss the days of a Gloria McCluskey or I miss the days, in particular, Gloria, because she fought for Dartmouth. And Gloria spoke her mind, right? And I've been I've been in places before, and I've been in a room where Gloria's walked in the room, and everybody in the room, you know, including her her, her peers on city council, stand up and take notice. And and her replacement, I mean, no offense, I won't name them, but you know, when you're trying to pass a bylaw to um, you know to limit uh, gas blowers, and, and you know, come on, we got no parking downtown. Um, you know, we, we we've got people that. Are, are paying taxes and stuff they never get to use in the city so that we can have bike lanes and no parking. Like, give your head a shake. And, and it's just getting so frustrating. Um, because what ends up happening, look, you know, I, I've often said this. If you look at, and the budget was just passed, if you look at the budget, okay, and they'll do the breakdown of where the money goes and the most expensive departments to run, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And I don't want to rip on anybody, but every bit, every single bit of what's taking place, the highest amount of expense is salaries at City Hall. And they'll say, oh, well, you know, you got to attract people. Well, you know, I don't, I don't want to sound, I don't want to dive too deep, but basically they're in the job creation business, right? They pass another bylaw that needs somebody to be able to enact it. And so that costs money, so therefore your taxes go up. It's really that simple. And when they start getting in the weeds and some of the stuff like, you know, paper straws, uh, you know, gas mowers, it really, uh, you know, uh, what's the point? What I, 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 I don't get it. I mean, like, yeah, you know, you're trying to do your part. What they should really do, and I understand they've got a tough job. Don't get me wrong. I'm not, I'm not belittling that one bit. But, you know, you talk to the city, it's a provincial issue. You talk to the province, it's a city issue. Um, what is it? All I know is both sides can can so easily insert their nose into everybody's business should they choose to do that. So that tells me it's a people issue. That tells me it's a, if they want to do something about it, they can do something about an issue. They choose not to. And, you know, when you get a visible turnout for elections, you get what you get. And, you know, I, I often said, I, I was asked many times to run for, for city council. And, you know, I often said that municipal, municipal politics was the purest form of politics because you weren't, you know, beholden to a party. You took care of your constituents and your residents. And I believe that to a degree. However, I'm starting to question it a little bit because I would say that some of these councillors, I'm, I'm wondering, uh, you know, how many of these councillors that pass this landlord registry thing, what's their constituents? Because I have to believe some of them have a lot of landlords that are paying their salaries to live in their constituency. So I would question that a little bit. I think what needs to happen, I'm very hopeful that this new CA, uh, CAO that has come in, because the other guy, let me tell you, I, I, you know, if you look, he was the highest paid civil servant in Halifax. He always seemed to get his way. Um, he never had to, I guess, do his job like a salesperson had to do his job or her job. And by that, I mean, you know, justify your existence each and every month or you're gone. And if there was more of that that would take place, I think you'd see more results as opposed to, oh, you know, we're going to do a, a report. We're going to do a staff report. We're going to look into it. Time to look into it's over, okay? Too many stupid bylaws have been passed. You know, the parking one is a good example, okay? You guys have heard me drone on about this, and I don't want to be, you know, go on about it too much, but... When I'm downtown playing in a Halifax bar and I'm parking in the loading zone because I'm loading out gear to go into a bar to do a job, I'm in a loading zone to load. When I'm doing that on a Sunday and a bio officer 
pulls up on a Sunday and says he's giving me a ticket because he can, there's a problem with that. All right? There's a problem with that. And I hate to say it, not all bylaw enforcement people that work there, they're not all bad people. They got a job to do. But let me tell you, if you've ever dealt with some of the ones, and, and I'll give you another example. I had a bylaw officer who came over, said tenant that I was talking about earlier, left a bunch of garbage on the back deck. Part of their tenant agreement was they were supposed to keep the property clean. That was right in the, the agreement, which is a totally useless piece of paper if anybody's ever been to the Tenancy Board or the Tenancy Act. So I get a call from a bylaw officer saying that they left all kinds of uh, garbage on the back deck. So I had to go clean it up. And the bylaw officer basically said, oh, well, you know what? Uh, I'm going to have to come back and inspect your deck uh, because if there's any rotten boards or whatever. Basically, he was saying that he could give the deck a fail and I would have to spend thousands of dollars to fix this deck. When in actual fact, there was nothing wrong with the deck, but he felt the need to kind of try to intimidate me with that. And uh, I asked for another bylaw officer who came out and basically said, yeah, this guy, you know, he loves this title and he loves what he's, he's able to do. That to me is sad. They need to crack down on that. So anyway, um, you know, I don't uh, brush by this one if you don't want to uh, don't want to hear it. But I would encourage anybody to go on Halifax.ca, find the mayor's email address, find your counselor's email address. If you get an issue with anything at any time, they're there for you. If they don't get back to you, phone them, and they will get to the point where they will start ignoring you because they view you as a problem. That's just the the luck of the game or the the, the get way the game is played. I'll close with this. I sent an email last year um, to all of city council, and basically it was about bars and restaurants and how, you know, people were sick of the associations that weren't doing a whole heck of a lot to help them, or it was too slow. And I don't I don't begrudge them. They're kind of at the mercy of government because they get government funding, and that's the way it is. So I, I had a whole, you know, I had a group of restaurant owners and bar owners and, and other people that were willing to sit down with council. And uh, David Hensby called me back within five minutes. He was great. My counselor, who I will not name, wagged his finger at me basically saying he was so busy and la, 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 la. Well, I'll, I'll tell you something. I more or less did the same job they did when I ran the Dartmouth Whalers. Um, I had a constituency, which was a zone that the Whalers played out of. And I had over 1,200 families that I was responsible for. Um, and I got emails at all hours of the night, and I had people grab me at all hours of the day. The only difference was I didn't get paid, you know, $90,000. I didn't get a $25,000 discrepancy fund to use it however I wanted. I did it as a volunteer. So when you sit there and you tell me you're too busy, yeah, you know what? Wrong answer. Wrong answer. Anyway, guys, I encourage you guys to not be quiet on this stuff because your silence only makes them think they're doing a good job.